Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss the Chapin mechanism for ozone depletion and derive some useful expressions. There are four steps to the mechanism. In our step one here, we have dioxygen, which splits up into two oxygen atoms, and this occurs with the rate constant K1. In the second, we have a collision between dioxygen and an oxygen atom and some other inert molecule, which we denote as M here, which could be oxygen. And in the process, we form ozone, O3, and the inert molecule continues on as before, carrying away some excess energy. And this occurs with the rate constant K2. In the third step, ozone decomposes into dioxygen and an oxygen atom. And this occurs with the rate constant K3. The fourth step is a collision between ozone, O3, and an oxygen atom yielding two molecules of dioxygen, and this occurs with ray constant K4. We notice for steps one and three, we have unimolecular reactions, either with dioxygen or ozone, and in either of these cases, this reaction takes place because of the absorption of ultraviolet radiation. Because we have a large number of similar looking oxygen species, to wit, we have oxygen atoms, we have dioxygen, and we have ozone, we have denoted each of these with a different color to help make the reaction mechanism and the resulting kinetics clearer. First, let us look at the change in the concentration of oxygen atoms per unit time. So we notice in the first step that we form two oxygen atoms for one molecule of O2. So that's why we have this 2 times K1 times the concentration of O2. So that generates oxygen atoms. In the second step, we consume oxygen atoms. So we have minus K2 times O2 times the concentration of oxygen times the concentration of the inert molecule M. In the third step, again, we're generating oxygen atoms. So this is plus K3 times the concentration of ozone. And in the fourth step, we consume an atom of oxygen. So we have minus K4, the concentration of ozone, times the concentration of oxygen atoms. And we're going to apply the steady state approximation and set this equal to zero. And we're going to call this equation Roman numeral one. For equation Roman numeral 2, we're looking at the change in the concentration of ozone per unit time. There's no increase or decrease in the concentration of ozone in the first step. In the second step, we generate one mole of ozone with a rate constant K2 times the concentration of dioxygen times the concentration of oxygen atoms and the concentration of the inert molecule M. In the third step, we are decreasing the number of moles of ozone. Ozone is being depleted with ray constant K3. So that's our minus K3 times the concentration of ozone. And in the fourth step, again, we have a uh, depletion in the concentration of ozone with ray constant K4. So this is minus K4 times the concentration of ozone times the concentration of oxygen atoms. And again, we're applying the steady state approximation. So we set this equal to zero. Next, we are going to add equations one and two together. Since each of these is equal to zero, this is equivalent to multiplying equation number two by minus one on both sides, and then setting zero equal to zero. So we get 2K1 times the concentration of O2 minus two times K4 times the concentration of ozone times the concentration of oxygen atoms is equal to zero. And as a reminder, just note that when we have the number zero here, we're always writing that in black. So that's another reason for color coding these expressions is to avoid confusion between the number zero and the letter 
O. We can divide through by a factor of 2 and then add K4 times the concentration of ozone times the concentration of oxygen to each side and we get that K1 times the concentration of O2 is equal to K4 times the concentration of ozone times the concentration of oxygen atoms. Then we simply divide each side by K4 to get this relationship over here, which is that the concentration of ozone times the concentration of oxygen atoms is equal to K1 over K4 times the concentration of dioxygen. Next, we're going to subtract equation Roman numeral number 2 from Roman numeral number 1. This is also equivalent to setting these two expressions 0 equal to 0 and then uh, simplifying. As a result, we get 2K1 times the concentration of dioxygen minus 2K2 times the concentration of dioxygen times that of oxygen atoms times the inert molecule M plus 2K3 times the concentration of ozone equal to zero. So we notice right away that we have a factor of two, which we can cancel through, and then we can simplify further. That gives us the K3 times the concentration of ozone equals K2 times the concentration of dioxygen times the concentration of oxygen atoms times the concentration of the inert molecule M minus K1 times the concentration of dioxygen. Next, we're going to assume that this expression involving K1 is much smaller than the expression involving K2, and this is justified on experimental grounds. With that assumption, we get that K3 times the concentration of ozone is equal to K2 times the concentration of dioxygen times that of oxygen atoms times the concentration of the inert molecule M. Simplifying, we get that the ratio of the concentration of ozone to that of oxygen atoms is going to be K2 divided by K3 times the concentration of dioxygen times the concentration of the inert molecule M, and we're going to call this Roman numeral 4. Notice that in Roman numeral 4 equation, we have the ratio of ozone to oxygen atoms, whereas in 3, this particular equation here, we have an expression for the product of these two concentrations. If we multiply equation 3 times equation 4, we get that the concentration of ozone squared is equal to K1, K2, divided by K3, K4, times the concentration of dioxygen squared times the concentration of the inert molecule M. And what we're particularly interested in is an expression for the ratio of the concentration of ozone to that of dioxygen. And we can get there by dividing each side by the concentration of oxygen squared and then taking the square root of each side. So this gives us equation 5, the ratio of the concentration of ozone to that of dioxygen, which is equal to the square root of this whole quantity, K1, K2, times the concentration of M, divided by K3 times K4. So let us recall our equation number three, where we had that the product of the concentration of ozone and oxygen atoms was equal to K1 over K4 times the concentration of dioxygen. And what we're going to do is take this equation and just do a slight manipulation on it to get an expression for the ratio of the concentration of ozone to dioxygen. If we solve for the concentration of oxygen atoms, this red O here, we get that this is equal to K1 over K4 times the concentration of dioxygen to that of ozone. And notice here we have O2 over O3, whereas in equation number 5, we have O3 over O2. So that suggests that we can take the reciprocal of equation 5 and substitute it into this version of equation number 3. So writing that out explicitly, taking the reciprocal, we get that the ratio of O2 to O3 is equal to the square root of K3 times K4 times K1, K2 times the concentration of M. Now the M is in the denominator. Now we can substitute this expression for O2 to O3 into our equation down here, ultimately to get an expression for the steady state concentration of oxygen atoms in the ozone layer. 
making that substitution, we get that the concentration of oxygen atoms is equal to K1 over K4 times this complicated square root expression. And now we're going to do some simplification to get a more convenient expression for the steady state concentration of oxygen atoms. To help simplify, we're going to use a property of the square root that the square root of k1 squared over k4 squared is simply k1 over k4. So we can write k1 over k4 as this expression here. And now we have the product of two square roots, which allows us to pull the whole product under a single square root. And we get that the concentration of oxygen atoms equals k1 squared times k3 times k4 over k4 squared times k1 times k2 times the concentration of the inert molecule M. And this expression we can now simplify to get our final expression. Notice that we can cancel one of the powers of K1 with a K1 in the denominator. And then we can cancel one of the powers of K4 with a K4 in the numerator. And we get our final desired result that we have an expression for the steady state concentration of oxygen atoms in the ozone layer through the Chapman mechanism. And this is equal to the square root of K1, K3, divided by K2, K4, and the concentration of M. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Please stay safe. And as always, have a good one.